Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here with an update on our active storm track this week. The good news is uh, if you don't like wintry weather, there's less and less of a threat, but there could be a little bit of ice on Saturday and that's what we'll focus on today. First things first though, we do have a weak system coming in from the south. This system is going to impact us tonight. Probably going to see a few passing showers, I would say after sunset for the most part, and wouldn't be shocked to see a few wet snowflakes or sleet pellets in a few spots, especially in the mountains and foothills. But the system we're really watching for the weekend is out west right now. I'm going to see if I could turn on the satellite imagery and show you um, a little piece of it. But you can see this is a very potent storm system affecting the west coast. This is going to dive down into Texas, and this is going to become our big weather maker for the start of the weekend. And in fact, that's going to be the one we're going to watch for potentially bringing us a little bit of ice on Friday night, Saturday morning before it changes to all rain. All right, let's show you the winter weather probabilities here. This is mainly going to be for freezing rain in this setup. So I have a tenth of an inch of ice accumulation expected. Um, and this is the chances or probabilities. See down the lower left-hand corner, you can see that the legend there, I'll move it up just a little bit. But we'll go through Friday, Friday afternoon, no issues. Saturday night, 2 a.m. We wake up Saturday morning. You can see this area kind of shaded in the darker green. That's the 30 to 40% chance of seeing a tenth of an inch of ice. And if you look closely, that's right along from Lake Lure, Morganton, Lenore, up towards Wilkesboro. That's that typical area right up against the mountains, the foothills, northwest Piedmont. A little chance down here towards the lake, but the further north and west you go, it's really Interstate 40 and then west of uh, of Shelby and, and, and Cleveland County. Now I'm gonna turn on the one one hundredth of an inch, which is just like trace amounts of ice. You can see there's a much bigger chance that many areas could see a little bit of ice at the start. Even in Charlotte, there's about a 20, 30% chance this starts as a little bit of ice before it changes over. But again, look at the amount, 0 0.01. So not a big deal. This is primarily going to be a travel issue on Saturday morning for bridges and overpasses briefly before it changes to all rain. In fact, we're not looking at a huge amount of ice, just enough that it could cause slick spots in the morning. But once that rain moves in, everything changes to rain and melts pretty quickly. So let's get into the future cast. We'll go back here and kind of show you the setup. All right, we're going to dive right into the future cast. So storm number one, you, you heard me talk about this yesterday. If you watched me online or on TV, we talked about storm number one. So this is coming in tonight. Um, you can see it moving in. It's moving a little further north than we ex anticipated yesterday. So this is likely going to bring the possibility of at least some light snow flurries for the mountains, but rain east of the mountains. And you can see um, really this evening, I think this is a little early. I don't think it'll come in at, at four, probably more after five or six, but you get the idea there. A quick burst of rain moving in through the area and then snow in the mountains and it's done. So this is a quick hitter. Again, non-event as I've been saying for a while and it really is because in its wake we've got a big area of high pressure. Now normally this is a good setup for wintry weather. High pressure to the north pumps in the cold air. We've got a low pressure coming in. Oh, if this setup held true, this would be your winter weather setup. Here's the problem. We'll go through time. The low pressure comes, the high pressure shifts east a little bit, it parks right there, it's pumping in cold, dry air. So yeah, initially this is great, low pressure here, I'd love to see this further down here by now, um, but the problem is this high doesn't stay here. This is your source of cold air. Remember, when you have low pressure like this, this is trying to overcome the cold air. It's pushing in warm, humid air. We call it a warm nose, right? That warm nose can cause a big ice storm or even sometimes snow if you have enough cold air continuously pumping into the region. The problem is eventually the warm air wins out unless this high pressure continues to pump in cold air. That's how you get significant ice storms. Uh, when you get both the warm air coming in aloft and the cold air at the surface being reinforced. Well, there's a bunch of terms I could, I could show you, anchoring high, um, barrier jets, things that anchor that cold air. So as we go through time, we'll go through early Friday morning. Um, we'll go towards Friday evening. So this is Friday evening, 7 p.m. Um, the 5th. So you could see the high is kind of in a not a great location. It's over Myrtle Beach, you actually, or Virginia Beach and the Outer Banks. What you really want to see is this thing up here, you know, or even over the Eastern Great Lakes or Quebec, continuing to pump in cold, dry air with dew points in the single digits and teens. The problem is it's here, the low is here, and they're kind of moving together to the east. So you see through time, we go towards Saturday morning, the high is already offshore. So it's not in a great location anymore. And you're saying, well, Brad, the high is still there. But look, the high is here, okay? Now the wind flow around it is actually coming in from a warmer direction. It's not pumping cold, dry air in this direction. It's coming in this direction. In fact, the winds are swinging around to the south, 
um, at the surface a little bit here. So as you look initially, yeah, there's some moisture coming in and maybe a little bit of a wintry mix 1 a.m. Saturday morning. But through time, eventually the high kind of falls apart and now we're getting overwhelmed with that southeast flow, which is coming in this direction. So the only thing keeping things cold is whatever cold air can get trapped against the mountains and also dynamic lift. When you take air and lift it up the mountain, it creates cooling as well. Um, so that dynamic forcing, and that usually is an icing setup, to be honest with you. That's why eastern facing slopes, which I'll show you in a minute, are probably the most susceptible to seeing some icing. So this is a 4 a.m. on Saturday morning, um, 7 a.m. we wake up. So this is probably the heart of the icing. Um, and again, I, I, this is, I actually agree with this pretty wholeheartedly right here. I think this is the area right here you're looking at icing. So uh, I'll zoom in on those areas. So you're talking probably down to Mooresville, Lincolnton, Shelby, north. Moxville, maybe to Winston-Salem, um, High Point area, north. Uh, the biggest icing, though, is going to be those eastern facing slopes in McDowell County, um, Upper Burke, Caldwell, Wilkes County, and then the eastern facing slopes in Avery, Ashwatauga, and Mitchell counties. Um, so yeah, just uh, just the, the ideal setup there. And then by the time we get to the middle of the morning, the warm air is one out and it's already done. So this is this is it. It's really just Saturday morning early on, and then the system is out of here. Um, that moves out fairly quickly. Um, we'll talk about the other system just briefly, but it's developing out west. This is good. This is what's going to come in on Tuesday. But let's focus in on the icing threat first. So let me talk about icing. So this is a great product that I like looking at. It's not tried and true, but it's the FRAM blend of models. What's FRAM? Freezing rain allowing model. It's a much more accurate way to look at freezing rain actually accumulating on things and using a blend of all the ensembles and guidance instead of one single model is a, is a good way to go. So we'll go through time here. We'll go through today and tomorrow, Friday. So let's go 1 a.m. Saturday morning. Um, no, not seeing much ice. Then right about there, um, let me pull back. This is 7 a.m. Saturday morning. And again, these are going to be a time period. So between, you know, 8 a.m. and, um, you know, 7 a.m., basically Friday to Saturday. That's what you're looking at. We'll go through time here. And I'll stop this about 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon. So you can see the icing here around Charlotte, just trace amounts. But notice the areas in pink where you're almost getting a tenth of an inch. So if I grab my cursor here, and again, this is the area you know, where I would be the greatest concern of seeing some icing right there. And again, I circled this earlier, this area right here. So yeah, Interstate 85, probably going to be fine. But Interstate 40, probably going to be a little slick early on in the day as we go further out. But these are the total amounts. I'm putting the cursor over there. You're all less than a tenth of an inch. They're not power line and tree issues. This is really going to be some bridges and overpass issues. And another product I look, look at is the Shreff Plume. So um, without getting into too much into the details, this is for Charlotte. The green is rain chances. Um, I'll move this over just a little bit so you can see the percentages here. Um, chances of seeing that. You can see the, the you know 92% chance of rain on Saturday. But there's initially at the start, this red is ice, uh, freezing rain. There is a 24% chance of some freezing rain early on Saturday, even in the Charlotte area before it changes to all rain. If I go down to the map here below, and I'm going to go to Hickory, just to give you an idea what Hickory looks like, notice the icing chance is up to around 55 or 56%, and it lasts a little bit longer, and it's more persistent. So that gives you a good idea. There's more of an icing threat in Hickory um, along Interstate 40. Let's widen the map a little bit more, and I'll go to another area. We'll go up towards um, the Boone area here. Let's go to Morganton, though. I like think Morganton will be a good spot. Same kind of thing, but I want to go up to the mountains here real quickly. We'll go to Boone just to show you. So Boone's got a little bit of snow in there, but mainly ice. So even in the mountains, this is primarily going to be ice. Um, this is not going to be a huge snowmaker. Not that there's not going to be snow, but we go back to the icing here. This is the ice setup here. We can look at the same model um, blend for snow and show you that the snow amounts aren't going to be something that I would write home about because of the ice mixing in. So we'll go through time here and you can see this is through, you know, basically Saturday afternoon. We'll go into Sunday. I'll stop it right there, move my head out of the way. So look at these amounts of snow. I mean, they're minuscule. And the reason you see a tenth of an inch around Hickory, remember, sleet gets counted as snow. So there's probably some sleet mixed in there. But um, this is not a huge snow event at all, um, just because so much mixing is going to go on. So we got plenty of time to watch. This is going to come on Saturday morning. But if I do have travel plans in the mountains, the foothills, northwest Piedmont early Saturday, I would maybe postpone them until late morning or noon. 
um, in the morning hours, and it's just bridges and overpasses we're worried about right now. So we'll keep a close eye on this. We're probably going to see winter weather advisories or freezing rain advisories with this setup. There's nothing that screams winter storm yet, but we'll pay attention to it as we get closer to the weekend.